Number three, Chris Hipkins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Education. Will she apologise on behalf of the government for the flawed handling of the Canterbury school mergers and closures after the 2011 earthquakes? If not, why not? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Louise Upston. On behalf of the Minister of Education, I am advised that she has personally liaised with the Ombudsman on his findings and committed to learning relevant lessons from his report. It is the intention of the Minister of Education and the Secretary for Education to meet with Canterbury Schools. This is likely to be in August, but could be earlier, depending on when people are available. In this meeting, she also intends to personally apologise on the initial mishandling of the communications to schools, to reiterate the previous Minister's apology and to listen to any ongoing concerns of schools as a result of the report. It is also her intention to update the schools on the $1.137 billion Canterbury Railroad pro programme and the working group that is being established to work on guidelines for future mergers and closures. I am advised that in addition to the changes the Ministry of Education has already made to their merger and closure process, the Minister has asked them to work with civil defence expertise to ensure appropriate lessons have been learned regarding the Ministry response and the recovery from the major earthquakes. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, Chris Hipkins. Does she agree with the editorial in the press that stated that her predecessor, quote, became notorious in Christchurch for a stubbornness and insensitivity that bordered on arrogance? If not, why not? That's right. The Mr. Speaker. Honourable Louise Upston. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister, um, what I will say is that uh, the former minister apologised in person, community by community, school by school, face to face, to the people that counted. Uh, she was also responsible for ensuring $1.139 billion of investment to make sure we have the most modern learning environments for the learners and school children in Canterbury. Supplementary question. Order. Supplementary question. Uh, Chris Hipkins. Why was student wellbeing and mental health not regarded as a pervasive factor by the government That's when right. deciding whether to merge or close schools? And does she now agree with the press editorial that it added to the impression of bureaucratic heartlessness and cold inflexibility? There are two Speaker. supplementary questions there. The Minister can address on, one on or On behalf other. of the Minister, as I've said, uh, the Minister and the Ministry intend to meet with Canterbury Schools uh, and to talk about uh, what other opportunities there are to already changed processes around merger and closures to look out what else has to occur. But I will remind the House and remind that member uh, that this, this series of earthquakes had a devastating impact across the region, across the country. No one had prepared for it. No one could have anticipated. And I think the Ministry of Education did an extraordinary job under very, very challenging circumstances. Speaker. Well, I apologise. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Oh, order. Point of order, Chris Hipkins. The, the question that I asked uh, the Minister was around what the, why the government did something at the time, not about what they're doing in the future. Well, no, no, and I'm not going to assist the member on this stage. It was quite a convoluted question. It was actually two parts to the question. There should really only be one. As far as I'm concerned, that question's been addressed. Supplementary question, Chris Hipkins. What additional support will she now put in place, given the Ombudsman's finding that the impact of the trauma caused by the earthquakes and the ensuing social upheaval on young children's learning and behaviour is becoming more evidence as time passes? That's right. The Mr Speaker. Honourable Louise Upston. On behalf uh, of the Minister, the Ministry has made a number of changes to improve its process generally as a result of the lessons learnt from the devastation in Canterbury. Uh, in addition to the Ombudsman's report, there is further work that is occurring in terms of what else can occur and, very importantly, working closely with the civil defence emergency teams because it's a wider response uh, than just the Ministry of Education. There is a significant amount of work that has go gone on and continues to go on in supporting the children in Christchurch. Point of order, Mr Speaker. A point of order, Chris Hipkins. My question was quite specific about the additional support for That's youth right. mental health as That's a result right. of the earthquakes. I'm going to invite on this occasion the member to um, repeat his question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What additional support will she put in place, given the Ombudsman's finding that the impact of the trauma caused by the earthquakes and the ensuing social upheaval on young children's learning and behaviour is becoming more evident as time passes. The Honourable Speaker. Louise Upston. Uh, as I said, uh, if the member had listened to the answer that I gave in the first question, 
uh, I said very clearly that the Minister of Education and the Secretary for the Ministry of Education are going to be in Christchurch talking to Canterbury schools. They will be listening to any ongoing concerns they have, and I would expect that there might be uh, changes as a result of those conversations. Your question, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary question, Chris Hipkins. Does she think that telling the House today that the Ministry of Education handled the process exceptionally well, given the circumstances, is somewhat in contradiction with, right. her, with her statement that the Minister was now going to apologise, and in contradiction to the fact that the Ministry of Education have apologised for right. a process that is widely regarded as wrong and adding to the trauma of, that people had already experienced. Honourable Louise Upston. On behalf of the Minister, uh, as I've said, there has been uh, an apology already made for uh, the process that had been occurred. No, I, I said in my answer, in my supplementary answer that the member raised, uh, that there was a set of excep exceptional circumstances and challenges in Canterbury. Uh, in this instance, the report has found that there were some areas that weren't done well, of which apologies have been given, and further work is ongoing. Uh, so I would appreciate that the member should take that into consideration. Question number four, Andrew Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.